So you'll get a you'll get a box on the camera. Oh, okay. Okay. Go yeah, can you hear me? <laughs> Let's see. It should come to you. Oh wait, I'll stop talking. All right, talk more. Uh, Carol, can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. Yep, there you are. On the, you're on the screen. Can we hear uh, Jessica? She's on. She's on mute. Oh, okay, mute. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> okay, we're just testing out the new technology. So, um, so I think I sent out the, I did send out the agenda a couple of minutes, uh, probably about an hour ago. Um, I've got to remember it on my head. And I've opened up my, um, opened up my thing. So people. This is not the one I did on this. I didn't put it on the agenda. No, I got it. I'll, I'll start, I'm going through it right now. Um, so today, it's actually pretty simple. We've got only a couple of things to kind of talk about, but we did. I did want to meet so that we can let you know what's going on. Um, the beautiful Bladensburg signage that we talked about, the theme, which were those, which has a, a picture of the earth on it and has beautiful Bladensburg. We've gotten the first ones printed up to put on the sides of our big belly trash cans. Um, Ray's got a couple of them in, and then we're gonna start We're gonna start to put those images out on social media. I just wanted to kind of give everybody that update that we did get that kind of stuff together. At the last meeting, um, we showed the committee a series of images, and I think we kind of determined that the one for the earth was probably good for now. We have a fall image, we have summer image, we have a fall image, and we have a winter image, right? Yep. That will, We'll keep on rolling out throughout the year. So just trying to give an update on the Bladensburg, um, beautiful Bladensburg signage. Is there any questions about that process and what we're trying to do with that campaign? So are those just for the big belly? What we'd like to do is like to see if we can work on it to transfer those to regular signs. We're starting with the big belly and then trying to find ways to put up like more permanent signage or even if we're doing, um, we're looking at the um, banners, you know, in some ways around town for in general. So we may, what, what I'd like to do is adopt it on the banners. I'm just trying to get the right places and getting everything on. Um, we don't have a lot of, of light poles that we own. Um, only the ones that the town owns are the ones we can put banners on. But we're so we're, we're, I'm still trying to get a feel for that. We're adding some more lights up on 57th Avenue, but a lot of the lights, existing light poles, are owned by Pepco. But we pay the energy costs for them, yeah. so they've made it now that they don't want anything attached to their poles. Because I think that'll help encourage people, right. make people aware of you know you got to put your trash in the trash can instead of the street. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we're trying to get it. We're trying to think of ways that we can create signage that one beautify the town. And kind of send a positive message to town residents, not just, you know, you know, just not just picking up trash, but also keeping, you know, making the town beautiful, make your, you know, that we're a beautiful city. So that's what we're trying to figure out right now is how to translate those images to um, the signage that we want to do all over town. So that's what we're working on now. Um, the, the next one on here was the Earth Day update. We Earth Day is April 20th. Um, we're working with Anacostia Watershed on our cleanup. We have been confirmed with that um, for the 20th at, I believe, at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yes, 10 to 12 p.m. 10 to 12 for the cleanup. Um, the issue that I'm working with Anacostia Watershed is also is that some of the things that we talked about with getting them to help us with getting plants for the town, you know, trying to get some um, pollinator type plants and things like that um, for the town of Bladensburg because they are growing them, some of them at Boswick. So Ray and I have a meeting with Anacostia Watershed this week so that I can kind of talk with um, the uh, the director about, you know, the stuff they're doing at Boswick, seeing how we can um, add those plants to when we're doing our greening and kind of using local plants versus using like annuals. So um, the summer stuff, uh, Council on McBride that you guys did on, um, that the students did on Thursday, we had some students from Elizabeth Seaton here who added some new landscaping in front of the town hall. Um, we're trying to use more perennials, less annuals, and trying to use things that are native or local, or in some ways that kind of are self-sustaining. 
Hostas are not always the best, but they actually are self-sustaining. They kind of populate themselves. So we've added a couple of different elements to the front of town hall as we're trying to layer that look um, that is that's sort of more than just our normal annuals that we put in. So that happened on the 14th. It was kind of a surprise because the girls from Elizabeth Seaton contacted us maybe a week before saying they wanted to do a service day and they wanted to come out to the town. So we had about, what, eight to ten? You got about ten. Ten volunteers yeah. that came. So it was a good day. I, was, I missed it, but I know that I've heard it was a, it was a good experience. Councilman McBride, do you want to share anything from that day? Um, no, I was just glad to see as many turned out. Yeah, it was a good yeah. turnout. Really good turnout. Um, the last one is this Bee City NOMO April. Um, Lois Kinkle mentioned it at the council meeting. I think Council Member McBride, um, I think you were there where she mentioned about, you know, the ability to um, kind of suspend enforcement of um, of our grass ordinance. Oh, is that? Is like you moving on purpose? Right. Oh. Um, yeah, that one of the ladies that attended, uh, she requested because she's growing, um, I think she's growing some type of Speaking flower that would help sure. with the bees and something else. Yeah, so it helps the pollinators because there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, and, and Ray's going to share a screen with you. Hold on one second. Okay. So the Bee City, which is kind of what the other, so what I did a little bit of research this morning because um, Lois sent me an email, um, College Park, University Park, and Greenbelt all have our Bee City committed and they also do the NOMO um, April. It really started NOMO May because in some parts of Minnesota, mm -hmm. May is when everything starts to come in bloom. Here it's April that you get that time when all of the, um, you know, depending on what region you live in, May is when we start to get those, um, like the clover and some of the crocuses and things like that that are friendly to pollinators. But it's really the clover and um, some of the grass seeds that the grass flowering that come up in that early part of spring. Yeah. So it, it this seems like it fits in the green team's um, purview. Um, I sent to the mayor a draft of, uh, of a resolution that the town could pass in April, even though we're a little late, but we could still get onto it saying, you know, we're going to encourage you not to cut as much in April, your yard. Mm -hmm. It's not something that's mandatory. And a lot of the um, municipalities have moved away from people having to send in saying, I'm going to take the pledge. More the fact that they give out little um, little uh, yard signs that say no mo April. Um, so uh, there's a little bit of controversy in this because there are some places and some counties that haven't adopted it in the state of Maryland. I believe in Baltimore County, they haven't adopted it. And there's a guy I think who's suing the county over it because I just read, I went and looked on Google about no mo April in, um, so that's just to kind of give you the, but when I talked to Sean, um, you know, with the other municipalities, they give people up letting their grass grow up to 12 inches up until May 1st. Um, I don't think we're going to see a foot of grass, but if you do, that's what some of, that's what College Park did. Um, so I think I would just kind of stay consistent with some of the other entities. I don't think we're going to have a large number of people that are going to have, um, you know, unkept lawns, but just in the month of April, we wouldn't be enforcing that issue on probably on residential. So that's really that one. I think because we we do have a couple of vacant commercial lots that I would might not I would make it just for the residential lots at this point because we we do have one or two commercial lots that if we don't um, combat combat the grass on them there's um, there tends to be homeless encampments and things like that. So that's the only caveat that I probably will make. But it could be volunteer, strictly volunteer. So that's that one, that's B City and then No Mo April. And then we spoke with Mike Honeycake from the state um, MML from actually University of Maryland, but it's part of the MML program for this um, sustainable Maryland certification. Um, he will be providing, he needs to provide a 90 minute training to the green team 
So that's probably an issue of days and times that work for everybody uh, because it's kind of a longer meeting. Um, he says that, that it'll take 90 minutes. I told him, you know, he's going to come to our, I, he's coming to our next meeting and then he's going to do the presentation. Right. I think we, we've emailed back and forth with him. Yeah, he should be at our next meeting in April. Okay. So our next April meeting, he will be there and then he'll kind of announce it. And then we'll come up with a date for your 90 minute training. So that you can be a certified green team. Okay. Um, the only other things that I've got is that we're still working on um, American Bloom, and we also are working on the sustainable communities um, plan with the other entities, which is our overall green plan that gets money from the state of Maryland for a D through DCHD. We have to be a sustainable community. Um, and I just checked in with Rod. Um, Barnes over at Emmiston, who's helping to lead the project. Um, they looked at our initial application. They say it looks pretty good. He's making the small tweaks to it. And once that's ready, I'll turn that over to the green team. Once it's ready to go in, I'll send it to everybody. But we've been just tweaking all of our projects and putting things out in. Um, and that's pretty much what we have. Ray, do you have any um, updates on composting yet? Because I know that you went to the, I think you can give an update on that composting. Yep. So I took a visit to the composting site. The uh, compost crew and Eco City Farms, they partnered together to have a site at um, Watkins Park that's in Upper Marlboro. And uh, we took a tour and they showed us uh, different things. But for composting in Blaisburg at Edmiston, right now we're not taking any more applicants because right now it's on hold until possibly the other port towns join. So once uh, anyone that applies now, they're being put on a wait list. But once the other port towns join, uh, it'll start resuming and other applicants can start joining and composting but oh so but i thought they were still collecting compost right they're still collecting yeah yeah, yeah. The we're still yeah we're still collecting compost for those that have signed up but anybody additional um that wants to sign up right now we're putting them on a wait list until the until they're ready to resume the the program but anyone that has signed up and already started composting then you're you're good to go so, so how does that work that the um, resident gets a container to put their mm. compost in. Yes. And then um, somebody comes by and collects it like once a week. Yeah, once a week, I believe on Tuesdays. Okay. Every, uh, Tuesday. it's, on, and the it's on Wednesdays. Um, and yeah, it's it's super simple. You get the container, you put your food scraps in there, and they come and pick it up, and they're pretty good about it because we are signed up for it. So. Uh, and, and the container has a lid on it, so yep. animals get in it. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's a really, I mean, that's putting us in the forefront of towns with the idea of having food scrap composting because so much food goes to waste when it's just put in the garbage. So, using composting really does help to get rid of that waste. Yeah, no waste. we um, have it half full from last okay. Wednesday already. So, good yeah so Michelle, I mean, is there any way that they may and i didn't think to ask that when we were on our cog meeting um that they may expand that to apartments apartment well, i don't know yeah that's we wanted to expand it to apartments we were trying to see if we could work with some of the managers i'm going to that manager's meeting that um the councilwoman blunt has this week and I'll put that on my list Can we to, to ask them yeah. if they're interested, because what the it, the interesting part about it is that we probably can expand. It's just more getting them to allow people to keep a lot, you know, a lock container where it can be picked up from their area. So and we can kind of work with them. I think that the they're they asked about Autumn Woods or asked about places that we could be at for that are multifamily. Um, because they found good success in that. It's just more the fact that whether or not the property owners would allow us to do that, because sometimes they do fear like what Mr. Weiss asked, you know, can animals get into it? You know, what's the, you know, does it smell, things like that. They're picking right. up weekly, so it shouldn't really have that issue, um, but they just wanted to, you know, be able to present it to the, um, to those to those landlords so that we can um, provide that. So. What we can do is find out if there is interest, then we can put our pair everybody together 
And I think because I remember he remember he asked us about uh, he asked us about Autumn Woods, right? Yes, in the beginning before the program started, they did ask about possible apartment locations, but it's just a matter of getting the apartments uh, approval and if they right. actually want to uh, have composting at their site. And what we can do is we maybe just email um, the person to say, hey, this is what it looks like for apartments, so that they can um, so that, that we can share more information with them, or if there are people interested, we can share that. But yeah. I think that manager's meeting that we're going to be starting, I think will be a really good opportunity for us to kind of start with building that, you know, building that information to them. Okay. Yeah, that would be good because they, they throw a lot of food away here. Yeah. And I'm like, it can be reused. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's true. It's And I think in some ways it's actually easier for the apartment buildings because you could just go downstairs or go to the the thing and just put it in there. Um, then it is maybe even for a single family home because it's, a, and it's also better for the, um, the composting people because it's a large amount that they can pick up, you know, it gives right. them something substantial and people are using it correctly yeah. <laughs> and not throwing garbage in there. <laughs> so we'll, so yeah, we'll ask and we'll find that out for you. Um, Thank you. Are there any other ideas or areas? I know we talked about the fact that, you know, the next, the some of the stuff with the green teams, they sometimes are out at different events. The town has some events coming up after Earth Day. We have um, International Day. Yeah, so um, our next big event uh, after Earth Day is our Bladesburg International Festival. Um, we tried it for the first time last year in July, but this year we actually moved it up to late April, which was uh, Saturday, April 27th from 1 to 4 p.m. And it'll be our uh, second year having this. So um, definitely Aussie Mayor James has just joined, but that's one event. And then in, uh, of course, July, we have our Blaze for Fireworks event. This year, it'll be on Friday, July um, 5th for the rain day of Sunday, uh, July 7th. So I think that those are good opportunities for the green team to sort of introduce themselves to the community. If we've got little giveaways or if we want to do something as far as, you know, talking about sustainability uh, with residents that we could be, we could have, you know, a table or some stuff there at those events. That's what I believe they did before was kind of have those kinds of things. So what we can talk about is even partnering with um, the composting people that are coming so that when we're getting, they can actually, you know, bring a table and they could actually have a thing and then we could have our green stuff at the same table. So those are some events and things like that. Um, but that's, I mean, that's where we are. So one, you know, beautiful Blainsburg signage is going up and should be getting out into the public in the next month and also going through a social media to Earth Day again. Reminder, it's April 20th. Um, and we will be working with Anacostia Watershed on some of the flowering plants that they provide. And then uh, number three is the um, Bee City uh, possibility of no mow April. Um, and looking at that as something that I think that the green team, if you guys are, if you guys are supportive of it, does anybody have any thoughts on that? And are you supportive of it? Because then that, then that way it can be something that the committee would recommend. I just wanted to bring it up because it came up from Ms. Mrs. Klinkle and she's not here at the meeting. I mean, from my perspective, I would be supportive of it. Like I've always, I mean, I know different communities and I've driven mm -hmm. through the different communities that do it. So I think it's a good idea. I think the one thing that they do is they do do signage um, for houses that are participating and we can look up how much that would be as a cost to put those together, but it's, Looking at the way that the ordinances are, I mean, the um, resolutions are written, it's just the fact that, you know, we wouldn't enforce it. And really the town really just, um, uh, and our current code is nine inches. Um, I did ask Mr. Um, Reinhardt about that. And the what the max with some of the other entities, and mayor, just so that, because I know you weren't, weren't on earlier, is 12 inches of grass. And so from April to May 1st, um, they couldn't, ex they don't um, write, they don't write things that for things that don't exceed 12 inches. And actually some just debate writing any kind of grass citations in the month of April, which is what the basic, the basic um, premise of it is not to write any grass citations in the month of April. 
And I asked Sean how many he writes it usually, and it's not a lot. My only caveat was maybe commercial um, properties that might be abandoned, that they would probably be excluded. Yeah, Loa's uh, plant has a lot of flowers in the yard. Yeah. And that's her concern. And people that grow flowers, I, I can understand their concern, you know. Yeah. The uh, flowers are coming up. You don't want to mow them all down. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So I just noticed that even with my own grass right now. Sorry, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There. So, uh, yeah, I understand. So the dates would be April 1st through May 1st. And understand you wouldn't want to mow over flowers, but I'm just not as familiar with this. So what is mm -hmm. the goal of this campaign overall? Is it like emissions reduction or something? It says support pollinators and yeah, and reduction. So what it does is that it supports the pollinators because a lot of the um, the wild grass seed that comes up during the winter is our, um, our clovers and things that the pollinators actually um, eat and, you know, or, or so, you know, use for the, the have pollination. So you, you get a lot of, um, it's actually in Maryland, we get like a lot of, I think it's called like a blue clover leaf that comes up and that's actually part of most of the grass mixes. And as people, if they don't treat their lawn or they don't do that in that first month, it allows the pollinators a good jump start, especially with the fact that we have a lot of blooming trees and all that kind of stuff. So it's the Save the Bee, bee City um, initiative that you would um, pass. And I mentioned the fact that um, University Park, um, College Park and um, and, and Greenbelt all are bee cities. Um, and they that's what it does. So it really helps the bees, but it does, um, it does, do, it does lower methane um, because you're not using that power tool unless you're using an electric um, mower, which some people do use an electric mower, so that doesn't really matter, but um, it does, it is, it's kind of both near. You're right. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. So if the if the green team would like to endorse it, that way I can then when we if I do bring it forward to the council, we have the green team's endorsement. Do you guys just want to take a quick vote? I mean, we got yeah. I don't. I'm not on the team, but you guys want to take a quick vote on it? Would that make sense? I wonder. Is there? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I wish Lois was here to explain it, but yeah. uh, the, I guess the clovers mostly in certain areas of the yard, but mm -hmm. would there be certain areas of the yard that they're concerned about or the whole yard? I think what she's, what, I mean, what it seems like to me, because I read the, the stuff on it, it's more the fact that um, just allowing your grass that time to grow through gives the pollinators a head start. Um, I know with her, she grows a lot of wildflowers and things like yeah. that. But it gives that the um, it gives the pollinators a head start to kind of you know just to kind of use whatever's in the in in the uh, grass seed um, grassing area. Um, I know that right now I was looking out of my my own my own lawn, and I have a lot of um, and I have bees at my house, so I have a lot of um, stuff that that is that is like little flowers and things that are yeah. coming up in clover underneath my grass. So we don't usually cut. In the month, uh, we don't cut until late. I, I can't keep my husband all the way through April because he's a fanatic, but I do get him not to mow until the very latest part of April uh, because yeah. of that, because they can do that. So, yeah, I, I don't we don't go all the way to April 30th. I think my husband would have a heart attack if I went to April 30th. But we do I have to say is that we do wait quite a bit for that to kind of get up and and I don't let them aerate the whole yard. We have a wildfire flower patch in one part of the, the yard for the pollinators. But yeah, mm -hmm. if you don't aerate and do all that kind of stuff to kind of get rid of those weeds, mm -hmm. that's what that's what's really helpful. So I have part portions of our, our yard that are set up so that the bees, you know, and I don't let them use certain. It also talks about pesticides. You don't use certain pesticides. It's encouraging people to do those practices. So people that are actually would have the thing in their yard are not using pesticides. They're you know, ha they're planting pollinators. The town is saying that they would plant pollinators, those kind of pollinating plants, the plants that are preferable and usually um, and not try to plant as many annuals because annuals are not necessarily pollinators, depending on what kind of annual they are, but to plant flowers that are are supportive of bees. 
I think also um, part of the specifically like no mow April is because like in the spring, there's not as much food sources for the bees. So um, part of the movement was um, particularly being from like Minnesota where it started and stuff like that. Um, there's just not enough for them to eat. So it was like eat that clover and that stuff is sometimes the only food source that they have. And if people are mowing it down, um, then there's a lack of other blooming plants for them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it. And that's it. Yeah. And you're, and you're right. In Minnesota, it did start in Minnesota and there's just mow, no mow May because of the timing, the regional timing of May versus April. Um, as the as the seasons, you know, as the um, the temperature zones are, um, and you're right, there it is kind of a dearth right now. But I find like right now all the trees are also blooming because it's an unusually warm mm -hmm. um, fall. I mean spring right now, so they are getting out there and getting out to the trees. Because I just saw my apple tree was blooming already. So there's stuff that's already actually blooming that doesn't that's not supposed to bloom for another couple of weeks, I think the, you know, lavender and all that will be blooming before mm -hmm. April's by early April, which they usually are don't, at one time they didn't. So it may, I yeah. think the funny part about with global warming, we might be talking about no mo March, March. Um, <laughs> instead of no mo um, April. So. so Mr. White, I just want to make sure, does that answer your question in terms of yeah. the mowing? Yeah. Yeah, like Michelle said, I think most people are anxious to mow their yards. So, you know, there'll be some people that really understand flowers and what's going on. And like Lois wanting to, you know, plant flowers. And, and uh, so I think those people would be the ones that would really do that, you know. And Mr. Weiss, it would not keep anybody who wants to mow their lawn from mowing their lawn. <laughs> so if you want to mow your lawn, you can. That's the thing. If you want to mow, and you're not a bad person for wanting to mow. I tell my husband that all the time. He's not a bad person for wanting to mow. Yeah. And like for the apartment, I mean, for apartment complexes and for, you know, for communities that, you know, have those kind of want to keep that manicured look, it's not saying that they, that we're, we don't allow mowing. I think that's the other issue too, is that. We can al we are allowing mowing. It's just that we're encouraging people who don't want to mow, they don't have to mow that one month. And then Michelle, to your point too, I think that education is important. So if we could invest in some signs so that those who are participating can have that in their yard, that way mm -hmm. neighbors aren't calling code enforcement to say, oh my gosh, Mr. White <laughs> has not mowed his lawn in three weeks. <laughs> You yes. know, that way it's a it's publicizing and promoting the initiative, but also hopefully encouraging other neighbors to be a part. And so maybe if we could just get little yard signs or you guys are already yeah. on top of that. We're already on top of that. Um, so we get, we'll have the yard signs and we have an image for you, which can you share the image? Ray's mm -hmm. already start when Ray saw it, he started an image for you guys. <laughs> we just want to make sure you're OK with it. Uh, oh, OK. Can you see? Oh, you gotta share. So press share on Teams. Are you gonna share? Okay. Can you all see this? Oh, you got it. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, they can see. Yeah, that's a good point. Let people know what's going on. They'll understand it. And other uh, communities to kind of go back to the mayor saying is that they also put together an information page, uh, which we can do something similar and add that to there so that it's really about public education on why not to mow and there's a bunch of reasons why not to so we can definitely put that together and make sure that people are aware of it but i think it's a nice thing because the green team exists to sort of you know start to adopt these policies so michelle i think you were asking if we can go ahead and just get a vote um, from the team members we have yep. that in the notes. All right. So who, Mr. White, as our chair, <laughs> do you want to call for a vote? <laughs> call for a vote uh, on, uh, well, uh, you explain it. <laughs> on uh, no mo April, is there a vote to send a recommendation to council for a resolution that would declare April no mo April? Anybody? Yes. Uh, oh, a motion from as a so so. Uh, 
Ms. Ms. McBride is, is making the motion. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Um, uh, just uh, uh, Mr. Weiss, I'm going to take over your portion. Uh, all those in favor? <laughs> uh, Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. So, so it's a, Michelle, it's a habit. I was like, I want to jump in so bad. I know nope. you do. I'm I letting like, Mr. I, White I do wanted, it. <laughs> I didn't want to jump in. I'm so used to like one. I mean, I never have to do it always. So I was like, oh, okay, let me just start it. Okay, so good. All right, thank you. That direction is good. So what we'll do is we will put together and, and we might meet before the April meeting, the council meeting. So, so that's what we need to probably figure out when, if our if our meeting with Steve is before, I mean, with um, Mr. Honeycake is before or after. Yeah. Um, but what I'll do is I will bring a draft of the resolution and the information sheet so that we can get it up as of, um, we can get it up and out there early and we can start talking about Mo NOMO and then the, the council can formally adopt the resolution at their April 8th, I believe, council meeting. Yeah, and then Ray, if you're okay with this, maybe we could record a little commercial to get out at the end of this month um, on the social media platforms, letting residents know that this is happening and to participate if we want them to sign up so we can have for our records an account of how many people are a part of the initiative, but at least we can push that out there so folks can start participating or at least plan to by April 1st in case they want to mow on March 30th and then <laughs> be ready yeah. not to mow in April. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just saw, I saw the public works out here mowing today. So it, it's not even it, everybody. There are certain people that are going to be out here. It's going to be tough for me to get Purnell to, to not mow as much. So, and we will, we'll try our best to not let anything get, you know, too high around here. Yeah, so I could um, put something out there before April 1st, and then once people sign up, then they'll receive a, a yard sign. Yep. Perfect. So we'll take this movement to move forward and then have the council to officially adopt the idea of it and for and also from allowing code enforcement um, to not enforce for people that are part of the program. All right. Great. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Last meeting, we talked about the library. Um, Lois was down there. There was trash, you know, around. Yeah, there. we we asked that question. I thought we, we we I remember looking at whether or not they had a trash can in front of the library and how to get a trash can there because oh, yeah, remember. remember those things that look like trash cans. And I went over there to investigate that um, issue because so it looks like there 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 are bollards out there that almost look like trash cans but there are no trash cans and the closest trash can is our trash can which is across the street at the bus stop um in front of the library or you have to walk it all the way into the library um we will um wait let me remind me i will send an email to mrs Ms. Chaconi, Ms. Caponi. Caponi. Yeah. Yeah. i'll send an email to her to ask about because i i what i said to miss um Kinkle was that I think that it's a issue with the fact that they're doing still a checklist with the county who built the library and something like that might have been part of their checklist because it's a green building is my understanding yeah and so they should have some kind of recycling and public trash out there for green for lead points so yeah the problem is they have those three big planters there yeah people think it's a trash can they're throwing the plastic bottles in there fills up with water when it rains, all those bottles come out on the sidewalk. Yeah. And I, as far as I know, they don't have any trash cans outside. That was what I was looking at, but I, I was, I'm thinking it might be a checklist something, you know, like, a, yeah. like the last punch list things that, because they were, she was saying to me, Ms. Caponi was saying there's a couple things that they're still working on for them. And I'm thinking that might be it. So I want to give them the benefit of the doubt that they have that issue. So we will send an email today and we'll let the, we'll let you guys know. I think there's a bus stop there too, right? You right. Know, mm -hmm. Next to, you know, on the sidewalk yeah. by the library. Yeah. I don't I mean, know if there's a trash can there, is there? There's one across the street at the one, the the, the one that's right on the corner. Yeah. There is a trash can there. Okay, but not but, on the side of the street. No, uh, we have the big bellies right there. So that's where the big belly, There, it's very close. It's just you have to cross the street. And in some ways, there's seating now in front of the library. And you're right, there needs to be. Yeah. A trash can. Oh, okay. But there is a trash can within a couple, about 40 feet. 
So we'll look into it and see if the library is going to provide provide it or not. Yeah. yeah, and whether or not we have to do it because now that they've created that. Yeah, and we have a couple of public trash cans there. So I'll send an email to Ms. Capani. Put that in my notes. Um, are there any no go dates for people that are coming up this um, for April? That I know that we are we will meet again before Earth Day, but is there any dates that don't work? Are Monday afternoons like this usually okay? Um, so you're really oh, yeah. sorry. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, you're we're, we're looking at April eighth now. Yeah, I was trying to figure out the date. Hold on, let me look at the dates. What I'm day kidding. is it? April eighth is the council meeting date. Um, right. I think Mike said that he could do 2 p.m. on April 11th for the 15th. Okay, that's Thursday. He can do the Thursday. I'm not Adam. going to be around on the Thursday. Um, we're going to be out of town. Okay. What's the other date that he gave us? Um, 11th or 15th. The Monday the 15th? Would that work? For Mike's yeah. training. Yeah. Okay. Is that the town council meeting day? The town council meeting day is the 8th, um, okay. but the training for Mike, I know we need to get that scheduled. So the 15th at 2 will work for people. That's Monday. Yeah, so it's tax um, day. I need to check. For me, like this time of year for work is really hard and unpredictable to schedule. So if there's like something like more like closer towards the end of the day, like it would be a little bit easier. Um, we could do four or five. We could do five. Okay. Because it, it, it'll be online, I think, versus it being in person. I can ask him if he can do it online um, at five, if that makes more sense. Does yeah, I think, I think that could work better if it's after the work hours. It's just Mayor, any thoughts or Councilman McBride for the, the 15th? Did he say? Did he say two o'clock? He said um, he could do the afternoon at two p.m. or early evening, and then he said say six thirty or seven p.m. Oh, so he said six thirty. Yeah. Okay. Six thirty I mean, would six thirty would still work for me. Like that yeah. would even be better because it's like after daycare pickup and all that. So um, okay, yeah. Okay. So that's April 15th, Monday at 6.30 p.m. Okay. And if we wanted to meet before the um, council meeting, I don't, I think, I, I think in that meeting we can, I mean, I, we could provide another um, update, but we could meet on the 8th, but I don't think we probably need to if we're going to meet the 15th. If there's anything important, important, we'll send out an email to everyone. Um, like with the new signage and the all that kind of stuff, just updates. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So Michelle, I don't see my calendar, but I'm I'll double check for the 15th and let you know. Okay. I'm thinking I have a Zoom doctor appointment, but I'll let you know. Okay. And one more thing, uh, we. Last meeting we talked about um, the shopping center where Tina's bar is. There's mm -hmm. two, they're both called Bladensburg Shopping Center, but it's right. one with Tina's bar. There's that no parking zone there along the the uh, chain link fence. Right. And uh, cars and trucks park there and dump commercial waste. You know, it's a dumping site. Right. And we talked about maybe getting a, a no uh, trash dumping sign with a fine there. Yeah, we I've been having Sean to work with that owner to make sure that that's not happening as much. But we can de definitely work with them to get a dumping a no dumping fine sign because usually they they can help us. I mean, we can get it and then they can help to so we can call to enforce it. Yeah. The only hard part about that is is that without um, without the camera or video on it. It's just a sign with no kind of enforceable. If there is some kind of camera there, we could see the license plate that's doing the dumping and things like that. So I'll talk to Sean about it and see if we can 
look at where maybe, you know, kind of move one of the mobile cameras around that area. And that, cause that's not necessarily a good safe thing either to have people dumping and stuff in that area. So let me talk and figure out with him and the chief, if that's possible to move something over there. Cause I think the no dumping sign without proof. Michelle, is- one other thing to think about too, is having in your pocket already and if there's a way they can help the owner secure a camera there it might be tricky because it is private property but it can't hurt for him to ask um her office oh um you mean the um you mean because we lost you for part of it you're talking about um the ivy um Del- i mean um chair ivy is that you, her yeah, office? Yeah, okay. I was suggesting it to check in with her office and see if maybe they could help. Sorry, the connection is not great. Yeah, no, we can do that. And we can also look at with our security camera program and the business program, right. you know, because we do have yep. the ARPA business program, then maybe suggesting that that's what they use their ARPA business program and that for is that a mm-hmm. camera there. So, yep. yeah, I'll work that with works. Sean okay. on that issue to see, like, a long-term and a short-term. Like, I'd love to just yeah. get a, get the trailer there for a couple of days to see, you know, what the dumping's like. And he's just driving in now, so I'm going to go bug him when he walks over. Yeah, because I think that portion of uh, Quincy Place is actually um, Bladensburg's property because Bladensburg made it a no-parking zone, mm-hmm. although the the they painted the curb yellow, but there's not not a no parking okay. sign there. So they said the town police said they can't enforce no parking without a no parking sign. And I I, I just like to I mean it's such a, there's you look at the they have a chain link fence there. They're dumping it over the fence. The other side of the fence is just full of trash, and people are sitting there drinking at night and you know in their cars and I mean. <laughs> I know that we talked about it because that's where the old Belling Alley was, right? At one time. Is that the property? Yeah, on the other yeah, side of that fence. fence. Yeah. Back there. And that's part of the Boswick party property now, part of that lot, as I understand. And it adjoins Boswick going yeah. out back that way. Right. Yeah. No, we're aware of it. And I know that we've been looking at the issues, but I think you're right. A couple of solutions would be good, but it's just talk, talking to that, that owner about a a camera. Yeah. So that we can have some information that's going on back there. So yeah. I'll mention that to the chief. And, and um, if, I don't know if they've started. Uh, we talked. To, uh, I think you have a beautification uh, program where you're hiring extra public works mm-hmm. people. And I'm thinking maybe um, when they hire the extra public works people, there's a fence, um, a gate there in that fence mm-hmm. behind the dumpsters. Maybe we could get them to go back there and clean that up. I mean, it's just. You have all these restaurants there, and and you see a field of trash. I mean, it's just really we can, built up. We can definitely have them. They've been doing some, actually, everybody has been hired, and they've been doing some extra work right now um, on areas like that, and it's a good one to add to the list. So I will talk to them about that. Okay. And we definitely can have them to work on that. Okay. Well. I think this is everything we've got. Anything else for the good of the order? One one question. This doesn't have really to do with the green team, I don't think. But do we have beekeepers here in Bladensburg? Um, I think that there are. I thought I thought Chris Mendoza and them or somebody was doing they were doing beat they had a they, they were doing some. That's the one I was aware of. Um I know that they were talking about bees at um Eco Farms as well. Mm-hmm. Um but I'm not sure of anybody else. I mean the when you you have to reg you can register with the state. Your hives, actually, I'm supposed to send my foreman for my hive at my house because they usually die and I usually have to buy new hives every year. So mine have made it through the winter. So I actually have to re-register my hive um, at my house. Um, but you had every people who have bees or should be should register them with the state um, of Maryland as part of the agriculture department. That's how they keep a number of how many beehives are in the in the state. So there's there's an agricultural inspector who comes out every couple of years to check on bees in the state. So 
it's available, but they don't have it necessarily publicly available. I, I think we could probably see, ask them um, which ones exist in Bladensburg or use a Bladensburg address, and they could probably look it up that way. But it's not something that's like readily accessible until if you you do have to, we'd have to talk to the Department of Agriculture. I know exactly, I know where to go to get it, um, but they do, if, if someone registers, there's a lot of people who don't take the time to register, even though it's free. Sometimes mm -hmm. people don't take the time to register. Okay, I'm just thinking because if we could support, you know, support them. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, because bees fly in a two mile radius. So even if there aren't bees in Bladensburg per se, they, they fly into be Bladensburg to eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a two to three mile radius that they fly in. Yeah, I know Mendoza um, raises bees there. That's what I thought Mendoza might be one of the people that was raising bees. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody, we'll see you later. We're going to call this to a close, I guess. It's 2.49. Okay. Have a good day. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Have a good one, everyone. Bye. See you. I was trying Thank to you. press. press